Welcome back from that. You saw how Everton had to rally around uh, to get a result from that game. Yes, we're still talking Nigerian basketball. It's no longer news. We all have read and have seen clips the way it emanated. Akim Busari is still writing here with me in the studio. Akim, you were actually telling our viewers what brought about the sudden court's um, injunction. But basketball as it is, we've achieved a lot. It's like we're training everything we've achieved in the Over past about. years Over about. onto the gutter. Uh, that's that's the way it seems and that is what's going to happen. If uh, the two years ban actually uh, stay, I expect FIBA to come add on us and they cannot go for less than five years. So you add five okay, years. I gotta cut you. Kaka is back. Good afternoon, Alaji Kaka. Hello, Alaji Kaka. Good afternoon. Continue. So, uh, as I was saying, FIBA will come add on us. And the sports ministry, what they gave reasons for why they asked us to stay away for two years, they were given what I call litany of lies. All can, we, can we get to know some of this? Yes. Like they said, the domestic league is dead, nothing is happening. They no reason why we couldn't hold the domestic league. Mm -hmm. They never came back publicly to tell or to fight for the survival of basketball domestically. Now, they said the basketball players, so some group of tired basketball players said they will no longer play for the national team because they want to kid her out. Now, these are disgruntled individuals who have gone past their prime. Some of that year, 37, 39 years, who has no club because of, want them, to play in the national team. because of them were dropped prior to the Olympic because they mm. couldn't meet up with other guys who came in from outside. They now formed themselves into a so-called like, gang, I will use our gang, to say they don't want this man there. Because they believe if somebody else comes in at the present, you still give an opportunity. Mm. These are tired and old legs. Mm. And you cannot compare somebody who's playing regularly in the NBA, uh, uh, NBA with somebody who plays for the past five years. I know even played active basketball. Mm. Or somebody playing in Saudi Arabia or Philippines come and compete with them. If you are a good individual, we can understand why you, are, you merit a slot in the national team. But these guys do not merit a slot. Mm. So the other aspect is. If I can't have it, nobody's going to have it. Okay, let me ask at this junction. What do we stand to lose? We stand to lose so much. Now, we have sponsors, who, prospective sponsors, who are there, indicated their interest, interest to work right, Because I was at Kida. the press conference, Kida. Yes, to yeah. work with Kida. Now, where, where, where do we go from there? These guys will no longer come in. You cannot expect to put your money uh, where you get no results, virtually no results. It will kill the game. And the ministry are double speaking, telling us they want to organize uh, basketball from the secondary school. Let me tell you, how many secondary schools do we have? in charge? The ministry wants to take over. They are now, that's why they said they want to come up with a formal uh, interim committee, excuse me, interim committee to take care of basketball. Who are those people you are bringing in? We have a duly elected uh, MB member for crying out loud. Are you just unilaterally and autocratically decided that you don't want the board again? Because you ate somebody's face. Some people think the minister has a direct or indirect um, input into this whole guagmire. The minister, I will call him a confucianist and the brain behind his uh, shenanigans. He knows what he wants, but he has forgotten that he's going to leave next year. And when he leaves, he has created a kind of big lacuna. There will be, even the shoes will be too big for whoever is coming in to fill. Mm. Because the crisis has lived uh, that long. He took over, we expected him to be better than that. Considering the fact that he's from the sport fraternity. As a journalist, as I, a journalist. I expected him to know better and to be better. But I'm disappointed. So far, he remains the worst sports minister we had in this country. He doubled it to athletics. He doubled it to ba uh, badminton. Today, Nigeria is, has been banned from the rugby uh, international body. Now, it's, why didn't, when we failed to qualify for the World Cup, why didn't the sports ministry so, football. So we should play football. They cannot do that. And after, after from football, basketball is the only sport that has given us joy and Very happiness true. in this country. Very true. In the last four or five years, what has uh, football given us? Not rather than on, on extra excitement and uh, high blood pressure. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me ask you at this junction, Akim. Um, we know school basketball is key. Sure. Um, the way it's going right now, Basketball will find it very difficult to find its footing because you need to start from the grassroots. 
how would you describe a situation whereby you talk to a kid to play basketball and he asks you where am i taking it to because two years is quite a longer time let me tell you already we have this uh shame the the talent factory gradually being uh, built by kidders board if a player gets tired another player is ready to fill that position mm. because we have a very vast uh, talent pool now if for two years the younger ones who played uh this uh the division one and division two domestic league cannot look up to say okay if i can get invited to the national team or i ought to go outside the country and play what happens well so they cannot have anything to look forward to all right i think i have a call right in here mr odezu good afternoon hello good, good afternoon how are you sir good i can barely hear you how are you today I'm doing good, thank you. All right, um, I'm on to Mr. Ugo Odezo, the Southeast representative of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. I quickly want to ask you, what is your take on the sudden withdrawal of basketball activities from international level? Well, I think it's the first time. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's any record, but I think it might be the first time uh, a uh, country has banned itself. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Go on, please. Can you hear me? There's yes, yes, I can hear you. Go on. Hello? I can hear you. Go ahead. There are somebody talking in the background. Go ahead. I can hear you. I think this might be the first time a country has banned itself from international competition. I don't know um, if there's any precedent to that. And I don't understand why it, is, it has happened. It do, uh, for me, it does not make sense because this is the first time and uh, Nigeria has been speaking basketball and then we are banning ourselves. <laughs> I don't, it, it doesn't look like a sports decision. Mm. Okay, let me quickly ask you. Um, we were suddenly having a fresh air uh, from the Basketball Federation and programs. Where do you think this would take us to? Two years. Quite a long time. Two years, two years is definitely a long time when you consider that the, the lifespan of an average basketball player, mm. the career span of an average basketball player is four years. Mm. So two years is a, two years away from somebody's aspiration of representing their country. Uh -huh. Whatever issues they've had or they think they have or perceived issues they had, I think will be solved without putting up the nuclear option. Uh -huh. What impact do you think this will leave basketball economically and development wise? Uh, of course it's gonna have a lot of impact, even from a sponsorship. I also own uh, Alpha Sports as one of the sponsors of the Big Tiger. You know, you kind of lose sponsor, sponsor confidence. Who wants to sponsor a country where you know that they can ban themselves two years after that? Mm. And if you have better confidence, you have players' confidence. A lot of players left in USA to play for Nigeria. And a lot of Nigerian people, there's a whole lot of catastrophe that's going to come from this. Wow. Finally, let me ask you, what's your take and what do you think could be done? We're out of it. We won't participate internationally, but what's your final take and what do you think can be done? I honestly don't know my final take. I've never been, uh, ever, I mean, I had a 17 year career in the U.S. working with sports brands. This is the most anemic I've ever seen it happen. So I don't know what the future is going to look like. I think hopefully they have a plan to develop sports locally. But we know there has never been a precedent for the, for the Ministry of Sports to have a plan on anything. Oh. I want to say a very big thank you to you, Mr. Ugo Udezu, the South East representative of MBBF, for being part of this show. We'll see how it goes. Um, things can still happen. I believe in element of surprise. But it's quite unfortunate that um, this incident is coming thank up. You thank you much. so very much for joining us. All right, um, Akibo Star is still in here, and um, we still have some.
couple of minutes, if I can take the call from um, Alaji Aba Kaka, I wouldn't mind. Akim, let me ask you, now, what is the impact? I just asked you go just now, and you saw how sudden he felt in his voice. Yes. What is the impact? It's going to have a social economic uh, impact negatively on the average Nigerian uh, sports loving youth, mm. those who are aspiring to become basketball players, male and female, those who have seen the achievements of the Tigers and the Tigers co dominating continental and global basketball. Mm. So you know, affect their psyche. Where do they, do they look up to? The sponsors who had lined up or funding for the game will no longer be able to do that. Okay? Several conditions that people play locally that are then ready to go to the national and from there play internationally will no longer happen. So it is just so painful and it's going to truly affect us in all the ramifications. But I think it is not too late for the minister to have a rethink because this decision to ban us is unpopular, it's callous, mm. it is retrogressive, and it is just in all dimension, it de is. destructive. It is. I really wish I could get uh, the opinion of Aladi Abakaka the South, uh, the Northeast representative of uh, MBBF, uh, that would have given a proper balancing. But that, as it may, the final word that came. Uh, well, I will just uh, rally all the six zone representatives on the MBBF board to keep going strong. Most of them, have, uh, they, they came up with programs they want to execute towards making basketball better uh, domestically. We heard about the uh, World Classic not too long ago. Yes, and uh, Southwest is about to come up with one. Yes. And that one, the Southwest are trying to come up and just with like Jack, literally like Jack, by the sports ministry. The same <laughs> template, the same way they want to, the Southwest want to organize their own, Interesting. what the sports ministry want to do. I wonder where the minister will decide on his own to take over the activities, the duly uh, the constitutional activities of the MBBF. It is just shameful. Okay. You've just had um, Akim Musari giving you. Okay, Alaji Abakaka is writing here. I think I have some couple of minutes. Good afternoon, Alaji. Hello, Alaji. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, Alaji. Hello. Can you hear me, Alaji? Good afternoon. Are you on DSTV? Yes, um, we're calling from Super Screen TV to get your view on the sudden withdrawal basketball from international activities. Can you hear me, Alaji? Hello? Yes, I said we are trying to get your view on the sudden withdrawal of basketball activities from all international participation. Wow, oh. that's, that's, that's the country we live in. Um, we expect things to work right, they work left. I, I won't say more <laughs> than that, yes. Uh, Akim Busari, yes. it's a pleasure having you right here on the show. You know, it's always fun when you come to talk sport, but in this particular mood, I don't want to say more than that. And I'm also wishing your team the very best. Uh, you won the FA Cup. Um, it's a pity I won't be able to take you in that segment, but be careful for the next one, which is the Champions League. No. Uh... No, you, you, you're not going to put my legs on that side. You're supposed to say congratulations in a very big way. I've just said that. Congratulations Thank for the so FA much. Cup. We have uh, two in the bag already. One. Champions League will be the third one. And the league. You're still dreaming. Title. You're still, still dreaming. we got to go on the break. Welcome we'll back to coming. And Joel will be joining me. Another match again.